So yeah, funny story. A few weeks ago when we did our Upcrate unboxing, I talked a little bit about the Lyra Aquacolor crayons that came in the box. The Lyra Aquacolor crayons. This is actually quite funny because I was thinking to my little self I would quite like to try these because I've never tried them. Well, turns out that I'm a moron. Either that or I'm a bit of a hoarder because I already have these. Hi everyone and welcome back to the Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem and as previously stated I uh, actually already have a set of the Lyra <laughs> Aquacolor water soluble crayons. These were gifted to me and I think that's why they've gone under the radar. If I buy things I gen generally tend to remember that I bought them and I'd completely forgotten about these. The worst of it is this tin's actually sitting right beside my printer that I use every single day. <laughs> uh, I haven't used them in the upgrade battle, I, I really like them and I was really curious to see how they would perform next to our friends the Neo Colour 2 water soluble crayons which is the Karen Ash equivalent. I really want to pit these against each other just to see what happens. I'm going to make a prediction though and I'm going to think, I'm going to say that there's not going to be much in it. One would think having used both of them. So just to explain a little bit of the differences between them. Both are water soluble, they call them wax pastels. Wax pastels. They're bloody crayons. They're, they're crayons, they're water soluble crayons. So yeah, they're, they're both the same thing and they both come in varying set sizes. So again, I'll just list these for you so that you can see for yourself. So this is the sets of Karen Dash ones you can get. And these are the sets of the Lyra, I keep going to say polycolor, the, the Lyra Aquacolor. This is the set sizes that they come in. The other main difference when I was doing my research was currently the Lyra Aquacolor are ch cheaper, they're a good bit cheaper than the Neo Color 2s. So I think your preference on these won't just depend on how this performs, it's also about budget as well. These seem to be, you know, this type of um, media seems to be really, really well loved by everyone. Crafters love them, uh, you know, junk journalers, scrapbookers, bullet journalers, you know, that the kind of paper craft community seem to really like them and artists seem to really like them as well. For someone like me, I use things like this for backgrounds or for mixed media pieces. I don't see myself burning through a particular colour anytime soon and nor do I see myself literally like scribbling my way through an entire tin of these. So I don't think the open stock thing's such a big issue for me personally, uh, unless you're a very um, prolific water soluble wax pastel artist. It's <sighs> a mouthful. I'm not sure how much of a benefit the open stock thing is, unless you're like me and you have one particular colour that you use a lot, <coughs> indigo, then maybe. But you could just buy one of those and still have a set of the, the, the Lyra's to, 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 you know, to play with, to have a bit more fun with. So that's just my initial thoughts, but we're going to get now to the most important part and test them out. For the purposes of this, I am going to be using Faber-Castell mixed media paper. I like this mixed media paper because it behaves well with most things and it's cheap. So that's why we're using it. And I say this about just about every single thing that we test out. And you guys know we test out a lot of stuff on this channel. The way that your medium is going to behave will depend heavily on what paper you're using. And it may even change depending on what paper you're using. So that is something to bear in mind as we go forward. And, and it's one of the reasons that I've picked mixed media paper. Because I think it closely represents all the different types of groups of people that would use these. Um, I really like to use them for backgrounds and colouring books as well. And again, depending on what paper it is, oh, sometimes that's a bit of a gamble as well. But that's all part of the fun. So I'm going to try and select a couple of colours out. Cause the, the set of new colours that I've got, which was also gifted to me, I hasten to add. Thank you again, Ashley. I love you with all my heart. I'm going to try and pick out some similar colours. I've just put a U in that automatically. It doesn't actually have a U in it. Oh, I'm so British. I'm also making the assumption as well that the, the recipe or the genetic makeup of these supplies would means that we can use them together. We could overlap them and mingle them, intermingle them. Uh, we'll maybe try a little bit of that at the end, but let's just see them side by side. So as I said, yes, first of all, we want to try these just as crayons because we want to be able to have that benefit. 
And straight away, that's funnily enough not causing me any problems. So the the neo color feels a, a tiny bit softer and waxier. Uh, the aqua color feels a little bit harder. So let's try um, here. Now it's not posing any problems. It's not doesn't feel horribly hard. Uh, the neo color definitely just feels a bit silkier than the aqua color though. Now let's see what happens if we try and build up some layers here. And uh, yeah, okay. So you can see where I've been able to. Oh that god, that looks really offensive on the on the camera lens. Now the easiest way to test these for me is um, with a water brush. Now I'm not going into the methods and things that you can use for these because there's loads of videos on how to use them, including the fact that we did the 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 upgrade challenge with them as well. Um, they, they're not smudging out much, they're smudging a wee bit, but it's not doing anything fancy. So I just wanted to check how much, uh, you know, it's actually like how much transfer you would get. And the new colour being softer, it's kind of like, it's doing its thing a little bit more. So let's see how soluble we actually are. Now look at the colour difference. That's the first thing I want you to note from the actual lay down to what the, what the water does to it. That's quite significant, but I can erase out every single mark that we've made with the crayon to practically nothing. So you can see the colour difference there. That was the stroke that I made with neat with the pencil. So let's just see what the new colour does. Ah, now that's quite interesting. It's staying a bit truer to its neat form. Obviously you expect it to be a little bit lighter because it has been diluted with water. But there's a significant difference between these two, whereas not so much with this one. That's why we're going to test out a couple of colours. So let's try with the blues next. Here is the, the... These are both Prussian blue. So that is the aqua colour one. Again, very generous going down. It's not uh, it's not complaining or uh, being stingy. And they feel pretty consistent in their... They're laid down within their own brand. And it's something I talk about with pencils quite a lot. The likes of your yellows and your reds tend to be a little bit softer than your blues or your purples. And these, these feel very similar to their uh, lighter, more greenish counterparts. But look at the colour that's coming off these. Oh, they're so they're very, very pigmented, and that's one of the reasons I really like them. And that's just an absolute dream. Now that seems to be a bit closer to our original colour as well. I feel as if I'm getting a bit more intensity from the Neo colour. Uh, and the thing is, it's not to say that I'm not getting intensity from the Aqua colour, from the Lyra ones. I am, I'm getting lots. I just feel like there's maybe a little bit more pigment in here. And this is, this kind of tells you what I'm talking about. Um, this just seems like a, I don't really know how to put this. I feel like the Neo colour would go a little bit further than the Aqua colour just because there's some pigment there and you would be able to pull that out and pull that out and pull that out and put, you know. I, I think there might just be a heavier pigment load in the Neo colour at this stage. So let's try now with our magenta type colours, which are actually carmine colours, but it's kind of the same thing if you ask me. So rich, so lovely. Then we've got our Karen de Ash one. Even just putting down the crayon itself, I just feel that like you can, you maybe can't see that on the camera, but this looks richer. And these are almost identical in colour, on the stick anyway. So let's see what happens here. Now see, we're getting this lovely pink colour, like that's a really nice shade of pink. We can, we can manipulate this as much as we want. Um, no, I'm not having any problems here. It just seems to be... A little bit more intense, maybe, is the, the word I'm perhaps looking for. That's probably my first observation. Now, the other thing as well is you've kind of got to wait for these to dry to get the full effect of them as well. And I would say our, our greens up here are, are dry. And this is the only one where there's a huge difference between the actual initial crayon colour and the diluted version. This is the only one. The rest of them are quite consistent as well. But as these are starting to dry, you can, I, I just feel like these ones, it's like, oh, it's just packing more of a punch. It's like, oh, blue, look at that blue. Oof. Whereas over here, it's like, yeah, check out my blue. I don't know, maybe it's just me. So we're going to move on. We're going to try a little bit of blending as well and a bit of layering and see how they fare with that. Got a bit of a dirty page here. I've just tried to put my razor over it and it's made zero difference. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use it. I'm I'm really um I'm really intrigued by this lighter blue in the Lyra set. So I'm gonna grab 
these. Better do this the same way round again so I don't confuse myself. Remember not to put the U in colour this time as well. It's just force of habit because we stick a U in everything in the UK. Okay, so let's try uh, let's try some dry dry blending first. When I say dry blending, I mean putting down our, our crayon onto the paper. There are different methods and different ways of doing this. This is the easiest way to test it out. Oh, that blue is so pretty. That's so pretty. So I've got a little bit of an overlap in the middle there between the dark blue and the light blue. Whoa, sorry. That was my uh, my excellent motor function and my excellent hand that I talk about all the time. <laughs> Okay, so let's try the, the same over here with the Neo colour. And I think probably this one's close to light blue. This one's called light blue too. Okay, that's nice. It's a slightly different colour, but that's okay. Let's see, we just get that overlapping. Maybe a wee bit more over here. Okay. Now, here's how we test this. Need to make sure my water flows good on my brush. Now, I'm only going to do one pass this side to this side. So I'm going to go light to dark and then I'm going to go back over at dark to light and just see what happens. Um, I want to see how the solubility is and how the colours react together. So I'm just going up and down like that and then I'm going to stop there and I'm going to wipe this brush off. Get rid of any excess. Ooh. Make sure my water flow is working. And, and oh, oh, that's a bit much. In the interest of fairness. And then I'm just going to go back the way I came and I'm going to keep going. Oh, wow. Okay, we'll let that dry. Again, cling off my brush. I don't have room to go any further on this side. So let's see how we go. Now, what's interesting is that all of my strokes are not disintegrating on that first pass from right to left. They're mixing together really well, though. Okay, ah, right, we'll let those dry. So the other thing we can do is we, we, we can mix them wet. Now, I'm assuming they're going to behave, um, you know, the same way. You would hope, one would think. Okay, so let's try um, let's try yellow and green. So here is my aqua colour. And this is the green that we were using before. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of that down by the side. A lot of people use, um, like, cellophane, you know, like, uh, perspex. Or glass as well is another popular one for this. I just use my ceramic palettes because they have quite a few of them now. Uh, right, okay, so that's the aqua colour. God, that's even offensive and... Oh, God, it's like neon colours. Now, I've got two yellows here. I've got yellow, normal people's yellow, and then I've got offensive lemon yellow. A balls to it. We might as well use the offensive one. <laughs> so, yeah, you're basically mixing them together in the palette. Create a new colour. And that's dissolving really well, so it's not like kind of hanging about on the palette. And let's see, oh, that's quite pretty actually. Oh, I quite like that. It's like um, it's like a delicate lime green, and it's not the aqua colour. <laughs> that one belongs over here. Oh, gem, gem. That one belongs here. I kind of like that colour though. That's good. Okay, so that was the neo colour. That is not the aqua colour. Please do not get them confused. Yeah, it's picking up, no problem. Let's, um, yeah, let's let's move it over here, pretend it lives over here. Right, now for the aqua colour. Again, that's absolutely beautiful. Perfect. No problems at all. So, they, like, these are so happy to be soluble. <laughs> like, they really are. I know that's what they're designed for, but they're wax, and that's something that always really, really blows my tiny little mind. It really does. So we can mix them no problem as well. We can mix them wet. Now if we just go back to our little gradients here, uh, you can see I have, um, again, this much more intense blue and that we kind of talked about that over here, but that's carried on and it's given us a much, much better gradient here. Even if I cut that off at roughly the same size as that one. So like there, it's given us a much more even gradient than I have here, you know, that you can blatantly see some cut off points there. Whereas this seems to have blended together. Now I deliberately used a really hinky technique so that something like this would show up if that was the case. So we're definitely getting better blendability with the Neo colour in terms of blending two different colours together. The last thing I want to do here, I'll just find a space somewhere. Yeah, there we go. There we go. I'm going to see how far each of these goes. See if I can get to the bottom of the page. So I'm going to use the Prussian blue just because it's a nice easy colour for you guys to see. So again, I'll have aqua colour here and then I'll have neo colour. Now I'm going to do some quick marks. One, two, three, four, five. So that was back and forth five times. And that was just with a normal pressure, not pressing hard. And I'm going to do the same with the new colour. One, two, three, four, five. I want to see how far this is going to go before I can't see any colour anymore. So let's see what happens with the new colour. And that's there. So we can pull it out this way. And yeah, 
Like, I'm, I'm still going. Still going. So the only rule to this game is you're not allowed to add any more colour. You're going to keep adding as much... Oh, picked up some pink dagnamit. <laughs> That's cheating. Okay, so we can get a really good... Like, there we go. I'm taking it out past the pink. We're superseding the pink. But that's probably about as far as I'm gonna get. Yeah, okay, we're kind of done there. That's so you can see with the, the eye, you can see the end of that. And uh, I'm gonna do the same with this aqua colour now. I'm gonna pull this all down. So there's not much in it. You can actually pull the aqua colour out further, but we, we're back to this the difference in the intensity of the colour. Now, this certainly does better further down, but I'm just wondering if we were to obliterate some of what's going on up here with our neo colour. Look, if we do this, we can do the same thing and we can keep going with that too. So, I'm just like, this is just they're almost identical, they're not identical, but um, there's really, really not a lot of difference between these two, and I think that I, on the whole. Um, notwithstanding the open stock situation because, again, I'm not sure how much that's going to be useful to the, the average artist or crafter or journaler. I think this is really going to be down to availability in the country that you live in. I wish there was, like, one definitive standout test we could do. Uh, you know, like, what happens when you dissolve them in beer or something like that. That would be fun. Uh, I'm not wasting money dissolving them in beer just to see what happens. All the tests that we've done, they, they have come out really, really close together. So my final conclusions, based on what I have, is if there... If there was a mega, mega price difference in these, you know, if the Lyra Aqua Colour were a lot cheaper, wherever it is you live, compared to the Neo Colour, I would absolutely get the Aqua Colour because they're, they're so, so close. So close in what's going on with the Neo Colour. If for a very specific reason you want open stock, I would go with the Neo Colour because you have that option that you don't have with the Lyra Aqua Colour. On the whole... They are very similar. I would say the only characteristics that are different is that the Karen Dash ones seem to be slightly softer going down and I feel like there's more pigment in there, particularly in the darker blue. I thought that was quite apparent also in the, uh, when we did the blend, where did it go, this one here, there just seems to be more colour and a much smoother colour change there as well. Uh, so that's kind of my final thoughts on these. And I know that's not very helpful. This is kind of like back to the pastel thing. Is it's like, yeah, buy some of both and everything will be okay. But genuinely, for a long time, for some reason, and I don't know where I got this perception from, but I always felt that the Neo Colour had the reputation of being, you know, the, the high quality, high end artist grade soluble crayon. But these Aqua Colour sticks are... Fabulous. They're absolutely fabulous. They're really, really nice. And I think uh, what I would like to do is maybe in another video, just um, not even to necessarily follow on from this one, but I think it would be a good idea to create a picture and split it down the middle and do one half in the aqua colour and one half in the neo colour. Or maybe I could just do it and then post it on Instagram. If you have any thoughts or requirements on that, please feel free to chime in in the comments because you know I always like to hear your opinions, whether that would be a boring video or whether that's something you would actually quite like to see. I'm more than happy to accommodate you with that. Just before we go, the last thing I want to test are these whites. I needed to wait till this dries because I think it does tend to pick up some colour. Uh, so yeah, I just want to see how much opacity we've got. And I'm going to do it over the blue, obviously, because that makes the most sense. So that's just one layer of each of our crayons. And it's quite interesting, the texture shown up differently on those two. Oh, that's interesting. Now, the question is, what happens when we do this? We're about to find out. So, that is absolutely 100% mixing in with what's going on in my background. So, it's mixing in with my blue. It's picked up a little bit of the blue, which is fine, but it is blending out wonderfully, and it's left this, like, really creamy texture. Like, oh, yeah. Like, almost, it feels like a paint consistency texture. 
And it's gone kind of milky as well. I'll show you it there in my hand, which you would expect because it's white. <laughs> the aqua colour's done exactly the same thing. Like, it feels exactly the same. It's got the same milky yuck. <laughs> Um, uh, they're both sitting really well on top of on the what's underneath and obviously you're going to see a difference here because this is so much darker than this but it's reacting really well it's behaving really well and you can get some really nice effects I was thinking like water effects with the white on top of blues or greens or greys so yeah the white the white's doing a good job and they're not completely pointless for once which is absolutely lovely so I am super super impressed anyway that was more just to satisfy my own curiosity so in conclusion, it's it'll be down to price and where you are. If you're looking for a specific colour, you will need to go with the Neo colours because they're the only ones you can buy open stock. Absolutely no help in helping you make up your mind which ones are better. I wonder how many entire colours we've got. That's something else I should look up as well because that might help you make up your mind. <laughs> how many? How many Neo colour 2 colours? There's 126 colours in the Neo colour range. I'm just scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Oh, Dale Rowney own Lyra. That's interesting. It's not really, but it's good to know. <laughs> so the largest set of aqua colours I can get in Amazon is 48. So one could make the assumption that 48 colours is all you get. 48 is the biggest set I can find. Okay, so there's an instant... There is an instant, assuming that that is correct, that the aqua colour only come in 48 colours, your Cad and Dash are coming 126, so there's that's quite a distinctive difference and that may, may be enough to sway you, but in terms of what they can actually do on paper, they are very well matched indeed. So despite not being all that decisive or definitive today, um, I've had really good fun playing with this. I feel like I do want to do an artwork with these, so uh, I'll probably do it anyway, but if you say make some noises in the comments if you want me to film it, because I'm quite happy to do that if you would like to see me as I go along. If not, I can always just post it on Instagram and I'm finished and you can tell me what you think so that's it for today guys i want to thank you very much for watching please stay safe take care of each other and i will see you back in the cave on thursday for another video so have a great day everyone bye bye for now